Today we're going to discuss the use of ultrasound for supraclavicular nerve block and look at some clinical tips to help you improve your success rate. Let's begin by reviewing anatomy. Supraclavicular nerve blocks are performed at the level of the first rib and this is a key landmark for ultrasound. In the supraclavicular region, the plexus is emerging from between the scaling muscles and it's made up of the trunks or divisions. The trunks of the brachial plexus, there's a superior, middle and inferior trunk and each splits into an anterior and a posterior division. The nerves are located lateral to the subclavian artery, occasionally superior to it. If you're to look from lateral to medial along the first rib, important structures for this nerve block are the middle scaling muscle, then the brachial plexus, next the subclavian artery, the anterior scaling muscle, and then the subclavian vein. The first rib curves around the dome of the pleura. This curvature makes it difficult to visualise more than any one section of the rib at one moment when you're scanning. The pleura lies medial to the rib, so rigorous medial visualisation is essential at all times during the performance of this nerve block. Clinical applications. The supraclavicular block can be used for surgeries below the shoulder all the way from the mid-humerus down to the fingertips. Patient position. We position the patient in a sitting position, 45 degrees, head up, with a pillow under their head and their shoulders, but we move the pillow across the midline to expose the neck and the operative side. Rotate the head away as well. Technique. For monitors, we use AKG, non-invasive blood pressure cuff, and pulse oximetry as a minimum, and more as required. Skin prep we use chlorhexidine with alcohol. The ultrasound itself, we use a high frequency linear probe, 10 to 15 megahertz. The expected target depth in an 80 kilogram adult is about two to three centimeters. Local anesthetic choice. 15 to 30 mils of local anesthetic is required, injected incrementally. For anesthesia and long acting analgesia, rupivacaine or bupivacaine, half percent for anesthesia. For short duration blocks, we'll use mepivacaine or lidocaine. If you're combining the block with a general anaesthetic, you only need post-op analgesia. Consider using 0.2% repivacaine or quarter percent bupivacaine. This will work just as good for post-op analgesia as half percent would. You reduce the dose, increase the safety profile. The needle, we'll use a 100mm or a 4 inch short bevel nerve block needle. First, we place the probe behind the midpoint of the clavicle. Now the probe should be aimed acutely down the neck. The probe should more or less look like it's standing vertical. As if we're imaging deep into the thorax, don't aim the probe flat across the neck. You're not going to see the subclavian artery. Locate that pulsatile subclavian artery. That's the first thing. The artery is hyperechoic. It looks dark. The artery sits right on a white or bright hyperechoic line of the first rib or the pleura. You're not sure which when you start, okay? If the artery is not initially visible, slide the probe parallel to the clavicle, medial or lateral. Take caution not to mistake the carotid artery for the subclavian. You could be way too medial in scanning the carotid by mistake. The nerves, they're located posterior or lateral to the artery, occasionally superior to the artery. The brachial plexus appears a bunch of grapes, hyperquake docks encased in a hyperechoic fascia, white fascia, around those dark circles of the nerves. If the image of the nerves doesn't appear crisp, consider rotating the lateral part of the probe away from the clavicle. This will aid visualisation by imaging the nerves more in a cross section. Prior to needle insertion, turn on colour Doppler to look for blood vessels that may course through or around the brachial plexus. There's lots of branches. These can block your path to the nerves and be directly in the path of the needle you're inserting. We insert the needle in a plane starting lateral and posterior and aiming medial. Advance the needle aiming for the junction of the artery and the rib. Take caution as an office because identification of the pleura and the rib can be confusing. For safety, just ensure you never advance deep to the hyperechoic line of the rib or the pleura. Ideal spread of local anaesthetic? Well, it's beneath the brachial plexus first, extending up between the plexus and the artery. We inject half our local anaesthetic down here underneath and bes the, the plexus beside the artery. The needle then should be redirected 
to the most superficial aspect of the plexus. Inject the remaining local anaesthetic here, near the top of the plexus. The final objective is to have the plexus completely surrounded with local anaesthetic. Alternative techniques? Well, alternative, you can turn the patient onto their side. Turning the patient in the lateral position will give the opportunity to approach the plexus from posterior. You can look at the needle behind the probe. But here you lose the benefits of gravity pulling the shoulder inferiorly. Occasionally the shoulder can ride up in this position, making the block somewhat difficult because you're having to push the shoulder down. Additionally, in obese patients, the respiratory mechanics, they're much better in the sitting position. There's much less seesawing and movement. Catheters, well catheters can easily be placed in this, uh, in this uh, position, the supraclavicular technique. <clears throat> We're going to go and discuss that in a subsequent video. So have a look at the list of videos available for supraclavicular catheter technique. Pearls. Be prepared to abandon this approach for an alternative because of overlying arterial branches. Just decide to go to plan B, infraclavicular or something different if there's too many vessels in the way. Move the pillow or headrest towards the opposite side to maximise the area for needle placement. Particularly important when you're scanning slim patients. If you place the pillow behind their shoulders and behind their head, this will bring the shoulder forward and improve your needle access. Now the midpoint of clavicle is key starting point. So you go from the acromioclavicular joint all the way to the jugular notch. That's the full length of the clavicle. Feel these landmarks. Find the midpoint of the clavicle. And this is where you're going to start scanning behind the midpoint of the clavicle. So jugular notch medially, acromioclavicular joint laterally, locate the midpoint, then place the probe on the midpoint of the clavicle. If you've done this right, when you put the probe on, you'll be able to see the subclavian artery.